test.
We gather here today to honor the life of Nancy Catherine Wenzel Schonk. In the assurance of the Christian faith, we mourn her passing, but at the same time, we rejoice in the eternal life that belongs to Nancy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. As we begin, let's take comfort from the Word of God. This is God's promise to Nancy. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. This is God's promise to us. All honor to God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for it is in his boundless mercy that he has given us the privilege of being born again, so that we are now members of God's own family. Now we live in the hope of eternal life, because Christ rose again from the dead. And God has reserved for his children the priceless gift of eternal life. It is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. And in our mourning, Jesus gives us this invitation. Come to me, all who labor and are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. Let's pray. O oh God, who gave us birth, you are ever more ready to hear us than we are to pray. You know our needs before we ask. You know our ignorance in asking. We pray that you would show us now your grace, that as we face the mystery of death, we might see the light of eternity. Speak to us once more of your solemn message of life and death. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our days here are ended, enable us to die as those who are prepared to live forever, so that living or dying, our life may be in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand as we sing together, God be the glory.
be seated. One of the uh, great psalms that many of us uh, learned at very young ages is the 23rd Psalm. It was one of Nancy's favorite. So one of Nancy's uh, protégés, C.J. Young, is going to come and read the 23rd Psalm and then her granddaughter, Aljona, is going to play a version of that called The Lord is My Shepherd on the piano for us. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Thank you, Aliona. I, I know how much your grandma loved music, and I know she loved you, so she would have doubly loved that uh, rendition of the 23rd Psalm. Thank you. Nancy Catherine Wenzel was born on February 23rd, 1942, in Sunbury, Pennsylvania, to Howard H. and Nancy Catherine Van Allen Wenzel. She was a 1960 graduate of Greencastle High School, received a Bachelor of Science in Education degree in 1964 from Millersville University. Immediately following graduation, Nancy taught first grade in Connecticut, but the college age group at Lancaster Presbyterian Church provided a perfect opportunity for Nancy to meet Merwin Schock and on June 7th, 1964, they married. As a military family, they served both stateside and in the Philippines for a total of 24 years. During that time, they raised their two children, Matt and Kate. You may be wondering, where is Matt? 
Well, as luck would have it, Matt broke his arm last night and is at the hospital today getting treatment. So pray for Matt, and uh, we'll uh, hopefully have a good videotape of, <laughs> of the service. After retiring from the Navy, Merv and Nancy thought about returning to their home state of Pennsylvania, but instead decided to stay in South Kitsap to help with the establishment of a Presbyterian church in this community. In 1979, they became charter members of South Kitsap Presbyterian Church. They and several others are responsible for everything that the church has become. And uh, what a legacy they have left. Nancy had a calling to work with children, and that calling led her to serve as Sunday school teacher, church youth department leader, a children's leader with Bible study fellowship, the founder of a book club. Nancy also worked as an English as a second language teacher for the South Kitsap School District. Nancy was called home suddenly on April 22nd, 2019 at the age of 77. She survived by her husband, Merv, her daughter, Kate, her husband, Mark, her son, Matthew, her sister, Mary Lou, and grandchildren, Aliona and Sasha, as well as nieces, nephews, other family members, numerous friends, and many, many who loved her. Nancy will always be remembered for her patient spirit, her loyal dedication to friends and family, and as a reflection of the love of Christ, which she shared with so many. These are some of the facts of Nancy's life, but the real meaning of Nancy's life is far better conveyed through the impressions she made and the blessings that she was to so many of us. So we want to take a few moments, there's no way we could possibly include everybody, but a few moments for those, the, the brave among you, <laughs> to come and share maybe a remembrance, a thought, uh, something about Nancy, maybe something about your interaction with Nancy that uh, might be especially meaningful to all of us as a reflection of uh, who Nancy was in her life. And we're going to ask her daughter, Kate, to begin, and uh, the rest of you can get your thoughts together, and you're welcome to come up uh, once Kate has shared. I'm going to be one of the brave among us, <laughs> but I have my cheat sheet. <laughs> I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it is true. It satisfies my longings as nothing else can do. We're glad that you are here to celebrate and remember Mother's life with us today. When Pastor John asked us to suggest some words that describe mother, one word that daddy mentioned was storyteller. And I thought, that's totally appropriate. That's a perfect word to describe her. Ever since I can remember, mother shared the telling of stories through reading to both Matt and myself, by teaching us how to select a library book I'd peruse the first few lines, see if our interest was sparked, and then check out our stack of choices with anticipation. She entertained us on long car trips with stories from her childhood, sometimes daddy's too, and we came to know a little bit more about our family. And years later, when Aliona and Sasha would be on car trips with us, they would ask Babushka, tell a story <laughs> and when when they were needing entertaining and eventually the suggestion was made that maybe babushka needed to write down some of what she called the little nancy stories and so she did that and this is one of our favorite little nancy stories this is little nancy and the chickens it was summer and little nancy was staying at granny and grangy's house one morning after breakfast, little Nancy's Grammy said, little Nancy and Grangy, please take these oatmeal cookies 
out back and feed them to the chickens. You see, Grangy had about one dozen chickens in a pen at the end of the backyard next to the alley. And he and little Nancy liked to go out there often and sit on the bench together and feed them. They enjoyed that. It was a time that they could chat and visit with one another. So this morning they sat on the bench and opened the tin of cookies and began breaking off pieces to throw to the chickens. The chickens ran to each piece, pecking eagerly at the tasty morsels. While they continued breaking off pieces of cookie, Grangy said to little Nancy, these cookies are still soft. They're not stale. I wonder why Grammy would want us to feed her perfectly good oatmeal cookies to the chickens. I think I'm going to eat one, announced Grangy. Do you want one, Nancy? Well, since Grammy's oatmeal cookies were little Nancy's and Grangy's favorite, how could she refuse? Yes, please, said little Nancy, and she and Grangy each happily ate a cookie. As Grangy reached into the tin for two more delicious cookies, he happened to look down and was horrified at what he now saw. Ants. <laughs> Little black ants were crawling all over the cookies. No wonder they were supposed to be fed to the chickens. They were not fit for people to eat. Grangy and little Nancy looked at one another appalled and then began to laugh at their yucky mistake. <laughs> as soon as we finish feeding the chickens, let's go in the house and get a drink of water to rinse our mouths, Grangy declared. Hopefully we didn't eat too many ants. So that's exactly what they did. And while they were at it, they confessed to Grammy what they had done. And Grammy, too, had a good chuckle. The end. When our family settled in Port Orchard, Mother's pleasure in telling stories became the gift that God called her to use to tell his story. With a love for Jesus and children in her heart, she shared Bible stories as a Sunday school teacher, as the story lady carrying her brown paper sack with an object hidden inside that would convey a spiritual truth, and as a children's leader for Bible study fellowship. Her faithful dedication to speaking the word of God into the lives of many children is one of her most wonderful legacies. The final verse of I Love to Tell the Story by Katherine Henke says, I love to tell the story, for those who know it best seem hungering and thirsting to hear it like the rest. And when in scenes of glory I sing the new, new song, will be the old, old story that I have loved so long. We know that we can trust in the truth that this is exactly what Mother is doing. The telling of stories goes on. And we hope that some of you will come and share some stories. Thank you, Kate. Who will be the next? Catherine? Oh, Vern. My name's Vern Judd, but in case you don't know me. When we first started the church, uh, Nancy, being a good officer's wife, thought that she would organize the women of the church and bond with them. And what a better way to bond than an exercise class. <laughs> so she got a bunch of women together at, at, at Merv and Nancy's house, and they sweated to the oldies for about an hour and a half. For the remainder of the week, a better part of the week, there was a bunch of women in our church that couldn't walk <laughs> or raise their arms above their shoulders. So I nicknamed Nancy Killer because she almost wiped out the female population of our church. But she atoned herself by, you know, a couple of years she started a book club and they meet for an hour and a half talk about a book, laugh at the book, laugh at each other, and I haven't seen anybody pull a hamstring or pull a muscle. <laughs> so she did a good job. She was successful, Mer. Thank you.
I'm Catherine Brady, and we were here a few months before the shocks, but not very much, and very involved uh, with working alongside Nancy in many areas. And Vern, what Vern shared was a great segue to what was brought to mind to me this morning about uh, Nancy. Uh, not only did she sweat to the oldies, but after one of our children were born, her and I discovered that we both had a love of dancing. And we took an adult modern dance class together down in Port Orchard. Leotards on, the whole thing. <laughs> so uh, yes, Nancy definitely loved to dance. And one of the things I think I will always remember about Nancy is working with kids, she knew how to give the look. <laughs> but it was quickly followed with a wonderful smile and a joyful laugh. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Jack Deal. And you know, one of the things I remember most about Nancy, John and I got to work at their house. And uh, about halfway through the morning, Nancy would come out with a plate of hot chocolate chip cookies. And you know, we got, and, and you know, that just, this happened once, you know. That happened two or three, four times through the time we were working there. And so you always remember Nancy for her chocolate chip cookies. But what a wonderful woman of God that, uh, just cared about people, and, and uh, I know that uh, we're, we miss her greatly, and, uh, and it's, it's hard, but you know, we know she stepped into Jesus' presence, and we can't, uh, wouldn't wish her back here for two seconds. Um, <clears throat> Nancy loved me. And what more can you ask for in a friend? We were so different. When we first met each other in church, we thought we'd like to get to know each other better. So we came up with the idea of going down to then Tweetons and having lunch, and we shared what our grandmothers were like. So that's a good tip if you ever want to get to know somebody. Um, I just can't emphasize how different we were. And in my grieving over her, I've thought, why is the world such a mess? Why can't we get along with people that are different? They have so much to give. Bill and I traveled with Merv and Nancy quite a bit. We took trips together, and the four of us were all different. And we just enjoyed each other so much. Bill and I were a little more raw. Nancy and Merv were a little more holy. Um, <laughs> But we, we worked with each other. They, they loosened up a little bit, and, uh, <laughs> and we learned there was another way to be. Um, I just couldn't believe when I heard that she was gone because I didn't know I could go on without her. But what's happened to me is God is so good. He's reduced my strong will again to where I'm a little child with a great father, I know his plans are perfect, even though they're wrong. <laughs> and um, I just trust that he's going to take care of all of us and that I will never lose the love that Nancy had for me, um, even though, she, you know, we were so different. She was so much better than me, if you can say that. But um, I trust he knows you're here, Merv and your family, and it's all going to work out okay. But I'm just glad that I had her in my life. Thank you. Hey, one or two more. Here comes Is that Michelle. I can't tell in the, in the light. Okay. You guys know I cry all the time anyway, so this is going to be really hard for me. Um, I met Mervyn Nancy at Judy Munger's house um, when I first came to church here with Jack and Faith. Um, 
and Mark Snelling, and we had a mission prayer group. Um, I'm not sure what it was called back then. Do you remember? Um, I just remember sitting around the table and just um, sharing our heart for the world, um, how much we love the world and, um, and God's calling for us in it. And years later, I was working here at the church, and Nancy volunteered with me, and she came in to prep the Sunday school curriculum. And that's when I really got to know her. And... Um, like Joni said, she loved me too. And I could tell her anything. She took some secrets to heaven with her. Um, but that's just how she was. It was always a real conversation. Um, I never had to put on a facade with her. I never had to pretend to be something that I wasn't. Um, and I will miss that because there's so few people that you can do that with. And she loved my boys to death. She was Gray's um, second grade Sunday school teacher. He's almost 21 now. And every time I saw her, she always asked, how, he, how is he doing? What's going on? And any trouble he had, I shared with her. Um, and I know that she prayed for him throughout his whole life. And um, I will miss her greatly. Um, she was an amazing lady. <laughs> Uh, I'm Andy Lewis. Um, I'm imagining I'm speaking on behalf of the kids of the church, but we're all adults now. <laughs> um, it's really wild. Um, I, so Nancy had a huge impact on me and many other people in my age bracket. Um, that when she did a children's sermon uh, at church, I was excited. I was pumped, and I never really knew, I, there must have been a schedule, but we didn't know what it was. And so when I saw there'd be a children's sermon in the bulletin, I was excited as a kid, and she'd come up here with one thing, and she'd teach us something, and she would have my attention the whole time. She didn't have any flashing lights or screens. It was just awesome. And um, I mean, John preached every Sunday, so that was fine, but I looked forward to hearing from Nancy. <laughs> it's the truth. Um, but I realized um, that as I got older, um, like our interactions, like when she and Merv would see me in high school, they'd ask questions and when I'd be in college and then when my wife and I got married and moved away, when we'd come back, she listened. She wanted to know. She, was, she wasn't just telling me things, she wanted to hear from me and that, that shift was really a big deal. Like, because in my mind, she's the adult and I'm the kid and it just was this different, being treated as an adult was a whole new thing. Um, but her whole spirit, her gentleness, um, her patience, the fact that she put up with us kids in Sunday school um, was just a huge blessing um, to myself and a, and a ton of other people. So she'll be missed. Thank you, Andy. Well, I know that so many of us have incredible memories of Nancy and we'll have an opportunity to share many of those uh, at the reception following the service today and among ourselves in various places and at various times for many, many years to come. Nancy loved music. She loved children's choirs. She loved great old hymns. She wasn't totally partial to some of the newer stuff that <laughs> goes on. But a new hymn that Nancy really loved was written by an English composer. What's his name? Keith Getty. Yeah, Keith Getty. Thank you. My brain somewhere else. Keith Getty, and you'll know it as soon as I tell you the, the title. It's called In Christ Alone. So we're going to sing this and pay attention to the words because they really reflect, I think, Nancy's belief. Let's stand together as we sing.
seated. Well, today is a day for remembering a wonderful wife, mother, grandmother, sister in Christ, and a dear friend has left this world, and it's appropriate for us to mourn our loss, to comfort each other, to remember Nancy's life, and unfortunately for most people in our world, that's all this day would be. It would be a day for remembering. Our privilege as Christian people is that we can make this a day of thanksgiving and rejoicing in the assurance that Nancy has entered into the very presence of God through Jesus Christ. I first met Nancy about 31 years ago. She was serving on the pastor nominating committee of this church when I was called to be the pastor. And after I had been here for just a little while, I began to realize what a blessing Nancy was in so many ways, and especially in our ministry with children, as others have talked about. Nancy worked in the children's Sunday school, the midweek Logos program, vacation Bible school, the BSF children's program. But nowhere as Andy just talked about, nowhere were her gifts better utilized than in her delivery of the children's sermon on Sunday morning. And with her simple, quiet voice, that kind of Pennsylvania drawl, <laughs> and a manner that just exuded love for children, she influenced many, many young lives. One of them will be ordained to Presbyterian ministry tomorrow night. My own children benefited from the love that Nancy had for them and the things that she taught them. When I 
shared the news of Nancy's passing with them, both of them broke down, both boys. And Joel sent me an email that I decided I'd share with you today. He said, everyone I've ever met can look back and remember a very small but very important number of lessons that truly impacted and shaped the direction of their life. For me, I will always recall the children's message where Mrs. Schonk allowed little Michael Jones to squeeze an entire tube of toothpaste onto a plate <laughs> and then offered him $20 if he could get it all back in the tube. A determined Michael gave it a go, as any one of us would have, but he failed to get much of, if any, toothpaste back in the tube. The lesson was that the toothpaste is just like our words. We can squeeze out a little or a lot, but once the words are out, we can never ever take them back. So proceed with caution and with kindness. I remember that lesson well, as it came shortly after Mr. Merv held the lot of us third grade boys after Sunday school one day. <laughs> he read Ecclesiastes 3 to us and took careful consideration to stress verse 7, a time to be silent <laughs> and a time to speak. We were a noisy bunch indeed. But the fact of the matter is, though we knew we were talkative, we also knew we were loved. We had church parents like Merv and Nancy who had a strong hand in our upbringing, who made the extra effort to lovingly point us back to Jesus in every aspect of our upbringing. They would greet us every week when we were little kids and when we were big kids. Nancy had a heart for helping us to see that we were a part of our church family, a very important part. I still think of her lessons frequently and I'm often reminded of them when teaching my own boys and raising them to be more like Christ. Nancy's gentle spirit and tender voice will be sorely missed but I'm grateful to know that her influence is alive and well in the students I teach, the children I am raising, and in me. Joel's testimony concerning Nancy is one that hundreds of kids, and now grown-up kids, could share. And you know, the remarkable thing is that Nancy never retired from God's calling on her life. She was actively involved in children's, mini, children's ministry, youth ministry, and in her book club right up to the end of her life. What an incredible legacy Nancy has left us. A storyteller, a teacher, an encourager, a supporter, leader, organizer, as well as being one of the greatest people to ever have a conversation with. Okay. And as a military wife, Nancy had to make some sacrifices along the way, but she was always supportive of Merv and his service to our country. A wonderful mom and a loving babushka. There's a Presbyterian confession that begins with these words. In life and in death, we belong to God. The fact that Nancy belonged to God in this life was so evident to all of us who were privileged to know her. The fact that Nancy belongs to God now is a result of the fact that she had for virtually her entire life placed her hands, her life into the hands of the one who said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And I suppose that, you know, deep down inside, all of us wish that Nancy was still here. Deep down inside, all of us want to live forever. And this is the hope and promise 
of our faith, and this is what Nancy was sure of, this was her faith and hope, that we can live forever through Jesus Christ in the very presence of God. The promise is contained in what's perhaps the greatest verse in the Bible, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The verse is John 3.16, the, the promise is that death is not an ending for us, but a whole new beginning in Jesus Christ. We pass from life in this world to an everlasting life with God. And our faith is not based on fairy tales or wishful thinking, but in the historical reality of Jesus Christ, who himself defeated death when he rose from the grave. And there were many witnesses, eyewitnesses to this event, and hundreds of people went to their own deaths as martyrs rather than deny what they had seen with their own eyes, that Jesus Christ was crucified and dead and buried, and that on the third day he rose again. He took the consequences of our sin upon himself on the cross and died for us. But God placed the righteousness of Jesus upon us simply because God wanted to. He loves us that much. And Jesus defeated death. And because he removed the barrier of sin between us and God, we too can live after we die. But we don't have to wait until we die to begin our relationship with God. In fact, our faith teaches that your relationship with God begins in this life. In fact, there is no such thing as being without Christ here and being with Christ there. The truth is, we enter into eternal life not when we physically die, but while we are still physically alive at that time when we say with all our heart, yes, Lord, I believe. I believe you have chosen me. I believe your son has died for me. I believe you have gifted me with his righteousness. Lord, I believe in life and in death we belong to God. Nancy's faith allowed her to exude the joy and peace in her life that can only come from God. And that faith allowed the Holy Spirit to form her into a person who made the world a better place who made my life a better life, who made many of your lives more meaningful and better. As a Christian, a follower of Christ, Nancy lived as a person who was prepared to die. And she died as a person who was prepared to live forever because she placed her hope in the one who died and who rose again. And she could say, along with the Apostle Paul, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we are also thankful. I'm personally so thankful for the privilege God has given us to know Nancy Schonk, for the inspiration that she's been to us as an example of a person whose life was shaped by her faith. And as we leave this place today, I know that there is a big Nancy-shaped hole in our hearts. But we have the hope of being with Nancy again, and we have the promise of God's comfort and God's peace as we continue to mourn her loss. But most of all, we have shared in the blessing of having known Nancy, a child of God, a remarkable person, 
and we joyfully affirm that Nancy has been welcomed to the throne of God at the invitation of Jesus Christ. We mourn her passing, but for Nancy, life is just beginning. And nothing will ever be able to separate her from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the assurance of our faith and God's message to us. Let's pray. 
Holy God, by your creative power, you gave us the gift of life. And through your redeeming love and amazing grace, you have given us new life in Christ. We commend Nancy Schonk to your merciful keeping in the faith of Christ our Lord, who died and rose again to save us, and who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit in glory forever. Amen. A hymn that many of us sang in our earlier days, at least every communion Sunday, was one of Nancy's favorite. So we're going to close with the singing of Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Let's stand together. invited to join the family for a memorial reception at the uh, other end of the building uh, in the Friendship Center immediately following the service. I'm going to invite the family to exit first so that you can get there while there's still food. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, we'll all join. We'll be right behind you. Okay? And now may the grace of God, the peace of God, which transcends our understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may grace, love, and peace from God our Father be with you now and forever. Amen. <laughs>